Welcome friends! Many of you have asked me about my main life Z palette, so that is what we are going to be going over today. Let's go ahead and jump right on in. So before we get started with this video, I just wanted to thank you so much for watching, and if this is your first time here, thank you for being here. My name is Emily, and today, as I just said, we are going to be going over my Life Z palette. Now, I did a video like this on my channel before. It was when I first started my channel, so it was a really, really long time ago, and things have changed a little bit. Some of these are still the same, so if you've seen that video, you might see some repeats in here, but there are some new shades. So recently, I did a single shadow and Z palette video where I just showed you guys my collection of single shadows and my Z palettes and whatnot. And I asked you guys if you wanted to see an in-depth kind of updated version of my life palette, which basically just means your main favorite single shadow Z palette that has all of the shades that you would ever need. Basically, if you lost all your Z palettes and you could only pick a few shades that were your absolute favorite, that would be your life palette. And that is this guy for me right here. Now, I personally am so proud of this Z palette. I mean, look at it. Look at the color scheme. This screams me. It screams pink lover it screams color lover I think this is beautiful and I'm very proud of these shadows but without further ado let's jump right on into what you guys are here for my life Z palette and the shadows inside I'm just gonna go row by row by row and it might be a little bit messy and it might be a little bit mishap this is not the most organized of Z palettes as you can see we have many different sizes in here and that's the reason why it doesn't look as pristine and perfect as most people's but I think that it's fun I think that it has character I feel like that's the excuse that people use when they have a body part that they don't like but they're trying to like cover up for it. For example, my nose is giant so I just tell everyone that my nose has character. So jumping right on into this beautiful matte pale yellow. This is Davina's Capri and it's an absolutely gorgeous, really light toned pale yellow but it's not super creamy and it definitely still is a yellow. I have a few yellows in my collection that are kind of similar but they're way more pale and they lean a bit more cream than yellow and what I like about Capri is that it's still a baby kind of pastel yellow and it still has that yellow undertone. It doesn't lean too creamy. This is what she looks like swatched out. It is a beautiful bright pastel yellow but you can really share this guy out and I think it works beautifully as a transition shade. And just so you guys know, just a little warning here, I might end up having swatches that magically appear on my arm. And it's not because I'm trying to pull a fast one on you guys or do anything of that nature. I am not very good at taking one take videos. I will stutter, I'll say things the wrong way, I will not say what I want to say right. I can't articulate certain things correctly and sometimes I mess up and so I just say it again until I get it right, until I think it sounds good. So I saw that someone had some concerns and questions about why some swatches were on my arm before I went ahead and swatched them again. And I don't have anything to sell you here, guys. These are my personal eyeshadows. It's not like I have a product to sell you. These are mine. I'm just trying to show you my collection because it's fun. So don't be alarmed if you see any double swatches. This is just all in good fun, and we're just here to show off my collection of eyeshadows. So with that guy out of the way, let's get back to this crazy collection of eyeshadows. So let's move right on in to this giant pan that I have a hit pan on here. This is the shade Butter Cupcake by Sugar Pell, and I'm sure you've heard of this before. Everyone loves this color. A lot of people claim that this this is their absolute favorite yellow and it's definitely a really good like true primary banana toned yellow. In my opinion it's a little bit more sheer than Capri by Davina and it's definitely more as I said primary tone. It's not as pale and as pastel and personally I like the pastel version of the yellow better but I do like having Butter Cupcake around. As you can see I used to use it all the freaking time so obviously I liked it a lot at one point. I'm just not really reaching for yellows that often in what I've been doing with my makeup lately. But I go through so many different makeup phases that I guarantee we will come full circle and I will be absolutely in love with yellow again. Butter Cupcake's little friend over here is from the Natasha Denona Sunset Palette actually. It's the shade Soul which is that beautiful matte yellow and this is also a really good really intense pigmented yellow. It's a little bit lighter than Butter Cupcake but it's not quite as pale as Davina's Capri. Out of all the three, Davina's Capri still wins this round for me. I absolutely love it, but these are all amazing yellows and they're all different in tone. They're very, very slight differences, but they're definitely different. Moving on to this next shadow here, this is actually a shadow that I depotted from the Creepy Cute Palette by Strobe Cosmetics. 
This is basically the shadow that made me want to buy that palette, which is kind of crazy, but I'm glad that I ended up buying it in the long run because I absolutely adore it. But at the time, I was basically just trying to get my paws on this guy, and this is the shade Strawberry Milk. It's a beautiful, really bright and intense pastel pink. It's a bit on the warmer side, and it's super, super pastel. It is beautiful as a transition shade or an all-over lid shade. This is one of my favorite pastel pinks that I have in my collection. So these five little babies over here are from the Little Rock Mega Pro 4 palette. And I depotted them, and I basically just wanted a nice row of different tones of creamy, kind of milky white shades. As you can see, we have a true white here. We have a more kind of powdery blue white. We have a pinky white kind of creamy color. We have a tan. And then we have this beautiful salmon, which doesn't really match with the rest of the creamy shades here. But it is still pretty pale, so I do like to use it as a transition shade. And this is basically like my little baby pan Lorac Pro transition shade corner. And I will swatch the powder blue because I think that one's pretty unique. And let's do the salmon as well. The other ones are pretty basic. That was a really horrible swatch. Good going. And powder blue. As you can see, it's got a really light kind of baby blue undertone, but it's more so on the white side, but it's still really interesting and you can definitely see it on the eye. So jumping into the second row, you guys might recognize this shade because it is very, very popular here on YouTube. This is the shade Dolly Pop by Sugar Pill. I have a lot of Sugar Pill in here and Sugar Pill is very popular amongst the bright eyeshadow lovers of YouTube. And there is Dolly Pop all swatched out. That is one swatch there, not built up. I just kind of rub my finger back and forth. But as you can see, um, yes, yeah, she's pigmented. Dolly Pop did not come to play. I mean, she is named after Dolly Parton, so I wouldn't expect any less. This is a beautiful, fuchsia-y, cool-toned pink, and it's absolutely stunning. It's definitely a hot pink, but it's the most cool-toned hot pink that I have in my collection. And I forgot to mention this earlier. You guys might be wondering why I skipped over these two babies up here. These are both ones that I can't really remember where I got them or why I even have them in my collection. I believe that this little baby pan is from Star Crushed Minerals, and it's a berry-toned matte. I don't know what it's called. It's so tiny that it doesn't have a little sticker on the back, but isn't it like the cutest little pan you've ever seen? And this beautiful salmon coral shade is from Etude House. I know that for sure. It's from a palette that I depotted. I believe it was the Rose palette. But the palette that he is originally from has been long gone, and he's just been living in here making himself a little home, so I'm sorry about that. I do not know really either one of these guys, but they like to just hang out there, so I let them do their thing. So the next shade is a beautiful creamy pale pink matte, and this is from Luxie Beauty, and this is the shade Tart. I don't think that this shade is available anymore. I believe this was from their dollhouse collection, which was kind of like their spring launch, I suppose. It definitely needs a little bit of building up to do when you put it on the eyes, but once you build it up, you can achieve a really soft, blown out pale pink look, and I like this to buff out any type of pink eyeshadow look that I'm doing, red eyeshadow look, purple eyeshadow look. This guy is actually pretty versatile. He works beautifully as a buffing shade or a transition shade. The pattern in this pan might be familiar to some of you guys, especially if you like the Dose of Colors 5 pan palettes. This is a shade from the Marvelous Mauve palette. I depotted that almost immediately once I got it. I went through this crazy phase of literally depotting like all of the palettes that I had and I don't really do that much anymore. So I kind of regret it to be honest because it's really hard to keep track of the shadows that I have that were originally in palettes because I just mix them in with all my regular single shadows. But this was the lightest shade in the Marvelous Mauves and it's a cool toned creamy like white lavender shade. It is so freaking gorgeous. As you can see that is super super pigmented. They are so soft and buttery to the touch and this is beautiful for buffing out any kind of purple look or blue look or green look. Basically any cool toned look that I'm working with or even a warm purple look, I reach for this guy. This little cream white is from the Marc Jacobs Lolita palette. That is a super, super old palette. People used to rave about it here on YouTube, and I don't even know if anyone's gonna remember that palette, but I depotted that guy, and it's a really beautiful pigmented creamy white shade. I love it for all over the lid when I'm doing an all matte look. As you can see, a lot of the shades in here are all matte, and that's because for like a year or so, I went through an all matte phase where I wasn't touching shimmer shadows at all, or glitter shadows, or anything fun like that. I just wanted straight matte looks, so I made an all matte palette and this was my go-to at the time. So jumping right on next door to this guy, this is from the Natasha Denona Sunset Palette. This is the shade Bermuda and this was my absolute favorite shade from the palette. I know that sounds really weird because it looks super basic in the pan but 
Do you see that pigmentation? I mean, God, the girl knows how to make a really pigmented pastel peach. And that's kind of hard to do because as you can see, I have a lot of tones like this in this palette and in my collection in general. And nothing gets quite as bright or as pigmented as this guy. If she released this guy as a single pan, I would absolutely pick up like three backups. As you can see with all of my Natasha Denona shades, they have giant craters and dips in them. And this one, I mean, you can see pan there, like giant pan. So people always say that you're never gonna run out of Natasha Denona shadows, but somehow I've managed to almost hit pan on so many of the ones that I own. So the next shadow is also also from a Marc Jacobs palette and I believe it was from the Lovers palette. All of these have been discontinued by the way. He replaced all of his palettes with new ones. He basically revamped the whole collection. It's a really nice pale kind of pastel whitish pink. It's pretty basic like all the other pale pinks that I have. It's not super standout-ish like the Natasha Denona shade but I like to have it in here because these are my favorite types of transition shades. Obviously. So now we've reached the only shimmery shadow that I actually have in this palette and as I said earlier for a while, I wanted absolutely nothing to do with shimmery shades. I don't know what that was about, but I preferred an all matte look. But things could not be more different now. I have been just wearing straight glitter eyeshadow all over my lids and walking out the door and calling it a day lately. I don't know what happened, but I literally did a complete 180. But this shadow is one of my absolute favorites. It's a beautiful dual chrome, as you can see here. And this is the shade Tesla by Luxie Beauty. And I have talked about this a billion and a half times on my channel, but for good reason. I mean, do you see this guy? He speaks for himself. It is a beautiful dual chrome pink shade. The undertone is like a hot Barbie pink and it has a blue kind of aqua shift to it. It is absolutely gorgeous and unique and I freaking love it. So jumping into this beautiful matte bubblegum pink shade, this is actually from the BH Cosmetics Weekend Festival palette. And I depotted this guy and this was a very surprising shade for me because I wasn't really expecting it to perform that well. I don't know why, it just doesn't really swatch that amazing. But on the eyes, this guy is so pigmented and bright and fun and I don't know the undertone of it is very different from any of the other light pinks that I have as you can see I have a lot of like baby kind of pastel pinks but I feel like it's kind of hard to find a true matte warm bubblegum pink that's like a mid-tone pink this guy's actually pretty unique to my collection and that's kind of surprising so jumping on over to the row that's basically right in the center here this pan right over here as you can see has the same exact design as the dose of color shade from earlier so of course this is a dose of colors I so I'm sure you can tell, but this is a dose of colors eyeshadow, and this is from the Sassy Sienna's palette. I actually bought the palette for this shade. At the time, I was freaking obsessed with corals, as you can see. We got a lot of coral action happening up in here. Lately, I have not been reaching for coral at all. I've been really like shocking myself with the kind of makeup that I've been finding myself gravitating towards because for a while, I did not break free from corals and yellows and reds. That was all I did. But this is a really beautiful matte mid-toned coral. There's not much to say about it other than I like the formula. I don't know, I just haven't been reaching for these types of shades lately. And jumping into yet again, another coral. This is the shade Poppy from Makeup Geek. And as you can see, Poppy Swatched Out is a little bit more sheer than the Dose of Color shade and I don't know, this one's pretty old, so maybe it's just because it's bad, but I feel like it used to be more pigmented. There we go. It just builds up on itself. And this one has a bit more of a pink undertone. It's definitely a little bit more pinky coral than the Dose of Color shade, which is a bit more orangey coral. So I prefer Poppy because I like that pink undertone, but honestly, they're so similar that I can't really tell in the eyes. So here is the last pastel baby pink of this palette. This is the last one, I swear. But this is Luxie's Cashmere. This one is newer to my collection and it's honestly, extremely similar to Luxie's Tarte but this one has a bit more of a cool undertone and it's definitely more pigmented so maybe they got rid of Tarte to make cashmere because cashmere seems to have a better formula either way I'm not complaining so this big guy in the center here steal in the spotlight is from a UK brand that I've only purchased from once and I saw them on Instagram I probably fell right into the trap of an Instagram brand but it is from a UK brand called Lick and Lash Beauty and I saw that they had single shadows and this shade was really calling out to me. For a really long time, it feels like I was yearning for the perfect like watermelony berry pink shade and I couldn't find one that had a really good formula. They were either too sheer or too patchy or they faded during the day. I just couldn't find one that was perfect for me. So then I came across the shade from Lick and Lash Beauty and I used this for a while to achieve the watermelony pink look. But as many of you guys know here on my channel, I have a watermelon pinky red shade that has stolen my heart and that is the shade Watermelon from Give Me Glow Cosmetics. 
Now, this shade from Lick and Lash Beauty is really beautiful, but it doesn't last as long as watermelon does, and it's not as blendable. I do like it, however. I think it's a good eyeshadow. I just honestly prefer watermelon way more, so more than likely, I will reach for that shade, but if I ever want something that's a bit more cool-toned than watermelon is, I will reach for this guy. So the smaller pan next door is from ColourPop Cosmetics, and this is one that I depotted from the Element of Surprise palette. As you can see, this is more of a satiny shade. It's not a shimmer by any means, but it definitely has a bit of a flip to it. It has a slight duochrome undertone to it, but it's not as duochrome as I personally would like it. But it still is really beautiful, and when you put it through the crease, it definitely buffs out to be more matte than satiny. This is the shade Opulence, and they describe it as a bright fuchsia with a blue flip. I see a little bit of that kind of cool toned blue flip to it, but it's more so just a satin fuchsia. Next up is a shade that I have talked about a billion times on my channel as well, and this is from Cleonid Cosmetics. You guys know I freaking love them, and this is one of my favorite shades that they carry. This is the shade Strawberry Mousse, and it is the most gorgeous pale pastel lilac you will ever see. It does need a little bit of building up, but once you get there, oh my god, it is so beautiful. I like to use this as a transition, of course. As you can tell, we have kind of a theme here with some of these shades. But Strawberry Mousse is definitely more cool-toned and has more of a purple, kind of lilac-y lavender undertone, but it's not quite as cool as the Dose of Color shade. Just for fun, let me go ahead and swatch it next to it. As you can see, the Dose of Color shade is similar, but it's more cool-toned and... Honestly, if I wasn't a crazy makeup collector, I wouldn't need both of them, but I think that this shade is absolutely beautiful, and once you start to build it up, you can really see that lavender, kind of pinky, lilac, purple undertone pop through. There's a lot of descriptive words for this one little eyeshadow. Moving right on down the row here, we have one of the most gorgeous neon peaches you will ever see, at least in the pan. There's a catch to this guy. So this is by Davina Cosmetics, and it is the shade Lala Orange. As you can see on my finger here, it picks up really, really strangely once you actually go to apply it. In the pan, it looks freaking phenomenal. I mean, I've never seen an orange this bright. I've never seen a peach this bright, I should say, but I really wanted it to perform in the eyes, but this is one of those electric body colors that I talked about in my single shadow collection. I had a neon like fluorescent toned yellow that I showed and it did the same exact thing that Lala Orange does, which is very unfortunate. Basically, this guy will not stick down onto my actual skin unless I pop down a white primer or a white base and I really have to work with it as you can see I barely blended it and it just blended away into basically nothing and it's all over my finger still so I, I have absolutely no idea why it does this it does this on the eyes if I blend too much it just will completely disappear like it's literally just disappearing right off of my arm you want to see a magic trick because I can show you one watch the eyeshadow disappear but there we go, it's finally sticking. But you definitely need a really, really tacky base to get this guy to perform, and then once you actually place it onto the eyes, it doesn't blend that great. So the only time that I ever go in with this guy is when I wanna use it all over my lid. If I'm not gonna be blending it, if I just pat it onto my lid and just leave it alone, it cooperates with me. Which is a bummer because I would absolutely love to have a shade like this that is actually blendable through the grease. He also produces quite a lot of fallout, as you can see here, and I'm pretty sure if I tipped this pan upside down, the contents of this eyeshadow would just spill out all over the ground. So I'm not gonna attempt to do that, but things don't really seem like they're very secure in there. Next up, we have Clarity Cosmetics Spring Break. Now, I'm sure you guys are aware of this if you've been here for a while and watched some of my older videos, but for a very long time, I was freaking obsessed with the shade Flora from the Venus XL palette from Lime Crime, and I was constantly looking for a dupe of that, and it's a beautiful matte neon peach. It's not quite as bright as the Dabina shade over here, but it's a little bit brighter than the Clarity Cosmetics shade, but I was looking for a dupe, and that's how I came across this baby right here, which is called Spring Break. This shade has a bit more of a pinky undertone versus Flora from Lime Crime, which has more so of a coral undertone, but this shade is absolutely beautiful blended out or used all over the lid. As you can see, he blends and he doesn't disappear. So I think that this is really beautiful and I don't think that the shade is talked about basically at all on YouTube, but it's really gorgeous and it's pretty affordable as well. Hashtag not sponsored, but I really do like it. So moving down to the red tones in the palette down here, we have ColourPop's Hop On. And this shade is a cross between a coral and a red. It's not quite a true red. It definitely has that corally undertone. And as I said earlier, I was looking for the perfect coral shade and this guy was my favorite for a while, but now I don't really reach for him at all. Next door we have Davina's Sura. This was one of my absolute favorites for a really long time. This was my absolute favorite corally red that I had in my collection. I still really like this shade. I don't get much use out of it anymore, but as you can see, I'm close to hit and pan, so obviously at one point I was 
Oh my freaking lord. Why have you betrayed me, Nails? Oh my freaking god, that was horrifying. Okay, I smoothed it out and I think I think we're okay. Did a little bit did a little bit of patchwork here, but I think she'll live. Anyway, that was horrifying, but yeah, this shade is nice. That's all I'm gonna say about it, and I'm just gonna move on. I'm kind of traumatized from that event, to be honest. Next up, we have the shade Splash, which is one of the Vivid Pigments from Colored Rain. Now, I'm like low-key upset with Colored Rain because I heard that they completely got rid of having the Vivid Pigments available as single shadows, and now you have to buy it as a palette, which in my opinion is really lame because I am completely hooked on one of their Vivid Pigments. I'm close to hitting Pan on it, and we will talk about him in a little bit, but I'm close to hitting Pan, and I want to be able to just repurchase this shade and if it was available once as a single shadow why would you just take it away from us like that that's not fair but this is a beautiful corally orange and I think it's really pigmented I think it blends well but I'm I kind of have a bone to pick with colored rain right now then we have the shade spark which is from ColourPop. it's from one of the ColourPop palettes I believe this is from the dream palette that Kathleen lights came out with do any of these shades look different to you because they're all starting to look the same to me. This shade is very similar to Davina Sura, as you can see. Splash has a little bit more of that bright orange undertone, but I mean, these two are practically dupes. So now we're jumping into the more berry tones. And for a while, like I was obsessed with corals, I was obsessed with berries. I'm kind of still on that berry obsession train, but I can feel it leaving ever since I discovered the Huda Beauty New Nude Palette. That's basically the only type of eyeshadow look I want to go for right now. As I said earlier, I go through a lot of makeup phases here. But here is Wild Strawberry, all swatched out here. This is from a brand called Star Crushed Minerals. I literally had to say that like five different times because I kept calling it Star Crossed Cosmetics. But this shade is a mid-toned berry matte. So jumping on over to his neighbor here. What is this? I don't even know. I'm not prepared. Slim Fit. ColourPop's Slim Fit. I've talked about this a lot on my channel as well. I use this in a few tutorials. This is a beautiful pinky coral. It's a little bit lighter than the rest of the corals that I have. But the next couple shades are literally all going to look the same. But as you can see, this one leans a little bit more pinky and a little bit lighter. And I really like this as a crease shade. So we have another Colored Rain Vivid Pigment here. And I had a bone to pick with you, Colored Rain. I am not happy about having to repurchase an entire palette to get this one single shadow once I hit pan. But this is a beautiful light coral as well. It's a little bit more peachy, if you will, than the rest of the corals that I've shown, which personally I like because I really love peachy tones and I love neon peaches, and this is pretty neon in my opinion. This is the shade Crushin, and I think it's really beautiful. Moving on over to this guy, we have Making Moves by ColourPop. This shade looks really dull compared to the rest of the kind of peachy, corally tones that I have out here. Yeah, it looks super dull. What is up with that? I feel like this used to not look as dull as it does now. I think I'm just starting to go insane here from looking at all these different varieties of essentially the same exact shade of coral. But as you can see, Making Moves is a bit more muted and a little bit more, I don't know, reddish, I suppose? It just looks more bleh and more drab than the rest of the corals that I have. Now moving over, we have another shade by ColourPop, which looks very similar to all of these as well. I feel like I'm literally starting to go crazy looking at these. My brain's starting to get confused. <laughs> literally all look the same to me now. <laughs> But this is the shade Fortune Cookie, and as you can see, this shade is more of like a dusty, rosy tone. So here is Fortune Cookie swatched, and as you can see, it's definitely a little bit darker than the rest of the corals, and it has more of a berry undertone to it, so it definitely stands out in this crowd that essentially looks the same. I can definitely tell the difference between this guy and the rest of them, but... I just need to move on from these corals because they're starting to weird me out. So we are finally at the bottom row here, and I feel like I've been talking for ever and honestly it's because i have so let's go ahead and just breeze through these guys so getting started with this little guy hiding in the corner here this is one of the shades from the natasha denona sunset palette this is that beautiful red that i cannot remember the name of that will be on the screen somewhere magically but there is one swatch of the red here and as you can see this red is a little bit more muted it's not quite as bright as i personally would like it but at the time when i first got the sunset palette this guy was my holy grail red. Now that I've explored the world of red eyeshadow a little bit more, this guy's not looking so great. It's looking a little lackluster to me. But at the time, I used this guy like no other because as you can see, just like the rest of the Natasha Denona shades, I've almost hit pan. I don't know how that happens with me. I am extremely heavy handed when it comes to eyeshadow, I suppose. Moving on over to an extremely popular and well known familiar face. This is the shade Love Plus from Sugar Pill. I'm sure you've heard of it. I'm sure you probably own it. This is a beautiful, true primary matte red, and honestly, this matte red kicks Natasha's Denona's matte reds, but 
As you can see, it's way more pigmented and more bright, and personally, I prefer that. Then we have a shade that I used to rave about quite a lot, and this is from Makeup Geek. This is the shade Razzleberry. This shade disappeared for a while. I believe it was one of her first bright shades that she put on the Makeup Geek site, and then she just got rid of it completely. Well, then she brought it back about a year ago, and I bought like three of these, because I was scared they were going to disappear like they did once before. And for a while, I loved it, and I definitely think it's a good shadow, but it has gold shimmer running throughout it. It's a beautiful deep berry pink shade but as you can see it has those freaking gold glitters running throughout it and I don't know what I'm supposed to do with those so I just buff them away usually and they end up on my cheek and I wipe them away with a makeup wipe but that's just one extra step that I don't want to take at this point in my makeup I don't know career I suppose maybe back in the day I would work that hard for an eyeshadow but now I want these eyeshadows to work for me so this little itty bitty baby dime sized pan is from the Viseart Petite Pro 2 palette I did a review on this a million and a half years ago it's a really bad video, so don't look it up. Just save yourself the time and don't don't look at it. But this is a coral shade. This was during my coral craze, and this guy is very lackluster. It's not super pigmented. It blends really, really nicely. I do have to give it that, but I don't know. I'm kind of willing to take pigment over blendability because I can make it work, or I'll just have an unblended eyeshadow look for the day. I'll rock that unblended, pigmented eyeshadow look. Moving over to this beautiful, deeper, mid-toned fuchsia pink. This is the shade Eerie Jerry from the Juvia's Place Festival palette, and this guy's actually cracked, so I have to be very careful with him. But as you can see, I depotted it, and that was not a good idea, so I do not suggest attempting to depot Juvia's Place mattes because it don't work that well. But this is a beautiful cool tone pink. It's not quite as cool toned as Dolly Pop, which I'll go ahead and swatch right next door so you can see the difference here. Dolly Pop has more of a cool toned blue base to it, where Eerie Jiri has a bit more of a warm base, but they are extremely similar. Oh my god, they look so freaking similar on my arm, but I swear in person they're slightly different, I think. <laughs> All right, four more to go. We almost got this. So this guy right over here in the corner is from Makeup Geek, and this is one of their Vivid Pigments. This is the shade Unleashed, which is a cool toned mid-tone pink. And I don't know, I'm not super impressed with this shade. It's not bad, I honestly regret buying it because I didn't need this in my collection. With how much makeup that I have and how much bright pink eyeshadow that I have, I really don't need this guy in my collection. It doesn't stand out enough amongst the others and the others kind of outshine it, so honestly I regret purchasing it. I just realized that we didn't do this row up top here. We basically haven't tackled all my hot pinks, so who oh lord, let's go ahead and get into it. This smaller pan over here of fuchsia hot pink goodness is actually from the same palette that this guy was from, the bubblegum pink, and that is the BH Cosmetics Weekend Festival palette. God, my arm is like, please help me, please stop torturing me. But this is a beautiful fuchsia, kind of deeper toned hot pink. It's very similar to Eerie Jerry. Then we have my favorite shade from ColourPop ever, which is called For Sure. And I believe this was limited edition. I think this was last year's summer collection. But it's a gorgeous hot pink, but it has a really warm undertone. It's a beautiful, like, strawberry hot pink, if you will. And I freaking love this. This is my absolute favorite color in the entire world. I love it. It's gorgeous. It's pigmented. It blends. It does everything that it needs to do. So moving right on down, we have another hot pink that is also from ColourPop, but this is much more cool toned, and this is the shade Sandbar. It was from the same collection, but as you can see, this shade has a blue undertone, where For Sure has a warm undertone. And now we are getting to the shade that I am so close to hitting pan on, and I don't even want to put my fingers in it, but I will do it in the name of this video. But this is the shade Party Drip, which is from Colored Rain. It is the most gorgeous, bright, neon hot pink that you will ever see. It is my favorite like neon hot pink that I have in my collection. I use this all the time. If you've seen me with a hot pink look here on my channel in the last, I don't know, month or so, I have definitely had this through the crease. It is stunning. It is pigmented. It blends. It's really, really bright. And I freaking love it. And I'm super bummed that I'm eventually going to have to buy the entire Vivid Pigments palette just to get this one little but perfect hot pink eyeshadow. All right, so now that we have those guys out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right on back to where we were before when we were almost done with swatching out this palette. This is the shade Passionate from MAC, and I'm literally gonna have to dig my finger in there to get any pigment up, because this guy is not very impressive. I've talked about this shade a few times on my channel, and it's just not a super impressive kind of berry toned pink. As you can see, it's not super pigmented, doesn't blend that great. I got hard pan literally the first time that I used it, so I don't know. They just didn't really wow me with this formula, especially with this color. When, especially when I have all these other beautiful hot pinks, I just, I'm not really impressed by this guy. Then we have this guy that I have hit pan on, and this is from the Natasha Denona Joya palette. This is the shade 
I believe it was called Bright Fuchsia. And when I first got it, I really loved it, but I actually tried it recently and I think maybe it's starting to go bad. I'm not 100% sure. It's a beautiful fuchsia berry matte, but back in the day it used to blend beautifully, but lately I tried using it and it didn't blend that well. So I'm going to give it a few more chances, but I'm kind of worried that it may be starting to go bad. And finally, we have this grapey blackened plum down in the corner here. This is from the Viseart Petite Pro 2, just like this guy was. This is a beautiful, as I said, blackened plum plum that has a purpley undertone. I used to use this guy all the time to deepen up my looks with when I was basically working with purples and pinks and whatnot, but I don't really reach for shades like this anymore and um, he's not showing up that pigmented. But this guy shows up much better on the eyes than it does in the swatches. I found that to be true with a lot of the Viseart Petite Pro shadows. All right, we are done. We have finally reached the finish line. Oh my freaking god, my hands are so stained. I look like I've been digging around in like kids jello or something. My arm is really stained too. Oh lord. We are finally done swatching out my Life Z palette here and all of my favorite shadows. Now I don't really reach for this guy that much anymore which is sad because at one point this was my absolute favorite. This was my masterpiece and I still consider this my masterpiece because I think all of these colors are so gorgeous. I do have a lot of repeats in here, but if you just count all of the repeats as one shadow, I absolutely love this color story. This is just like my most perfect palette that I could create. But nowadays I would definitely include some duochromes and some shimmers and some glitters even in here. I'm much more experimental with my makeup nowadays, but back in the day this was my staple and I absolutely love it to this day. But I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I know it was a really long one and I hope that you were able to find it helpful if you've been looking for any shades like this. Most of these are really good in formula and the ones that aren't good in formula I touched on so I hope I was able to help you with these little mini reviews here and with the swatches and whatnot. Oh, my throat is sore. I need to get off camera here because I've been talking for over an hour now. Holy Lord. But that is going to be wrapping it up for me today. I do hope that you consider subscribing if you have not already. I am doing all sorts of makeup goodness happening here on this channel, so I would absolutely love it if you would subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, I would absolutely love it if you gave it a big old thumbs up. And if you want to see more, go ahead and ring that notification bell because we have a lot more coming during this week. And don't forget to comment down below and let me know what was your favorite single shadow from this palette and what are some of your favorite single shadows that you have in your life palette at home but i hope that you are having an absolutely amazing and beautiful day wherever you are and thank you so much for spending your time with me here today i hope to see you next time bye